Hey, it's Ozzy here, continuing with the XMind 8 tutorials video series. And in this module, I'm going to cover some tips and tricks for XMind. Okay, so let's open that up and see what we have here. So the first thing is relationships. So let's go back to our work in progress here. And let me just delete some topics here just so that we can have a better view, a less complex and let's work with this okay so let me create a relationship and then explain because it will make sense when you see it if i right click on main topic six and go to insert relationship i then get this arrow you see and i can select anything i want in this case i'm going to select main topic seven and then i'm going to click the screen once and what this does is it creates a relationship between main topic six and main topic seven. Now, when you're building your mind map, you'll know what that relationship is. So if you hover over the line, you'll see that you have a little bubble here and that's a bit of text. And this is where you define what the relationship is. So when you complete your mind map, if you have a few relationships, you'll have a bit of text that explains what each relationship is. Now I find this super handy, especially when I'm working with a big mind map using the organization structure, which is this one, because a lot of times my subtopics are related and I'll cover an example of just that in the next module. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is when you hover your mouse cursor over the line, you'll see these little levers. If you click on the line just to fix the focus on that line, You'll see that these levers here can be moved like this just to move your relationship line, whatever you want. So I'm going to do this and actually make it go over the central topic. That doesn't look very cool, to be honest, but I'm just showing you what you can do here. So if you have a lot of nodes, you can manipulate your relationship line so that it doesn't cross over any of the nodes and that way everything's nice and readable. OK, so that's relationships. Let's go to the next one, which is boundaries. Now, I seldom use this, but let's say, for example, that these three subtopics are related and you want to isolate them for some reason. Well, you can right click on that and select boundary and you'll see what this does here. It creates this cool boundary around them and that can really help visually, especially with big mind maps. OK, so let's go to the next tip and this is links okay so this is quite handy actually let's say that this subtopic here was related to some page online now you can right click on this go to insert and select hyperlink and here you would just add an address hit ok and that is now a hyperlink and if you click on that it will open the actual web page OK, so you could create a really cool mind map with, let's say, for example, resources and you could add links to different topics as you please. OK, so let's go back to our modules and next are images. OK, so what you do here is you select a node. I'm going to select this subtopic here. I'm going to go to insert and image from file. Then you get your pop up and you select an image anywhere on your computer. I'm going to click on open and you can see that it has inserted the image into the topic. Now you can select the image and actually make it smaller, which is a very handy feature. And you can start to see how you can use this. For example, if you created a organizational chart for, let's say, a company, you could have pictures of each member of staff on your mind map. OK, so let's go to our modules again. And the next tip is collapse and expand. OK, so this is a tip that gets handier and handier the bigger your mind map becomes. If you're working with a lot of branches, you can right click and select collapse all. And as you can see, that's collapsed the entire mind map and vice versa. If you have a mind map and all your topics are collapsed, you can right click and go to extend all and that will open up every single branch and you can imagine how handy that is if you have a huge mind map. 
Okay, so let's go back to our modules and go to the next tip, which is export to JPEG. Okay, so once you have a mind map and you're happy with it, you can go to File, select Export, and choose from a range of formats. But here's the thing, we're using XMind for free, so we can't select just any format that we want. For example, you'll notice that the PDF is a pro feature, which means that we can't use it. But we can use the image format, and you can even export it to SVG, which is really handy. Okay, so I'm going to select image, go to next, and you can see from this drop down that there are a few formats you can choose from. I'm going to keep it as a PNG. I'm going to click on browse, and then I'm going to click on finish, and that has exported this mind map to a image. So if I click on open, that has now opened my image. And that's what it looks like. That's pretty cool. Now, if you're a blogger or a content creator, you can create a nice mind map that details a process or an idea. You can export it to an image and then you can add that to your blog post. And remember that you have the formatting tools as well so that you can change this any which way you like, change the colors, change the shapes, the borders, and just about anything. So you can actually create something that mirrors the theme on your blog or your website and create something really cool. And if you're in business and you're creating a report for a client, then you can also use mind maps and export them as images and include those in your report. Okay, so the last thing here is export to PDF workaround. Okay, a lot of people who use XMind want to be able to export to PDF. And unfortunately for us free users, the export to PDF feature is a pro feature. But I have a workaround and it's not a bad alternative. So let me show you what that workaround is. I'm going to go to Google Docs. You can use any word processor like Word or if you're on a Mac and you use Pages, use that. Or Open Office and so on. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on insert image or upload from computer. And I'm going to select the image that I exported before from XMind. And that is going to insert the image of my mind map. Now, if I was creating a report, I would have a nice header, maybe some text, a footer, whatever was needed. And all you do from here is you go to file, download as PDF. And if you're on a word processor, then you should be able to export to PDF from your file menu. So that's downloaded. I'm going to click on that and open it up. And that's what my PDF looks like. So that's my trick or my workaround and it works fine for me. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this module. And we have one more module to go, which is called tutorials. So I'll see you in that one.